the year started off well for you um, and welcome to today's time of sharing the word of God. And uh, today I want to share from a very interesting book in the Bible. It's one of my favorite books and this is the book of Colossians. Um, and if you know anything about this book, this book was written by Paul, uh, the apostle, and he wrote it while he was in prison in Rome. Um, the, if you know Paul was in prison in Rome because of preaching and while he was there, um, he actually met this guy. This guy or this guy came to visit him, and this guy was called Epaphras. And Epaphras was the guy, was a guy who was like a leader of this church in a Colossae, which was the city Colossians is named after. And so this guy came there and told Paul of a great report of how these guys had been doing back in the church, of how they had been serving God, of how they loving each other, of the amazing things they have been doing. And one thing about this letter I find unique is the fact that Paul actually never visited this church. He had never been there. However, he wrote this letter, number one, because of that, to a people who he did not know of, and number two, people he did not have a relationship with. So he wrote to them to encourage them and to help them um, go through some challenges they were having back uh, in Colossae as a church. And if you know well ab about the letters of Paul that he wrote, same to applies to Philippians, Ephesians, uh, the, the, Salonia, the, the, the book of Thessalonians, and the rest is that he used to write to different uh, congregations and different churches. And today we are going to read and find out something and borrow something um, Paul wrote to the church in Colossae, and that's from the book of Colossians. And so um, in Paul like fashion, in all most of his letters, Paul used to start like all like we wrote letters in primary school. He would start with uh, the greetings, and then he would go into more or less of quote unquote um, thanksgiving for them. And sometimes, like in the book of Colossians, he would go into praying for them, depending on what report he had had. And that's what I want us to learn and derive a lesson from today. So today, I want us to um, to read. Um, from Colossians chapter 1 from verse 9 to 12 as we get some encouragement to begin off our year and to start off our, our year with God. And so this is what it says. I'm going to read it from the New International Version or what rather is called NIV Version. And this is what it says. Again, it's a prayer by Paul. And this is what he says. He says from verse 9, For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And then goes on verse 10 to say, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way. And then co continues on in the same verse 10 to say, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. And verse 11 says, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance, patience, and joyfully. Verse 12 says, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you for this opportunity to look to your word. We do pray, God, as we look into your word, the Lord Almighty, your word will, will speak to us, will give us strength to live in this world. And as we begin the year, God, we'll find a foundation in your word to, to begin our year on and to found our whole year on, oh God, as we look to grow and to know you better. And for it in Jesus' name, I do pray, believe in and trust in. Amen. So I want us to look largely for, to, uh, to two verses, and that's verse 9 and verse 10. And I want us to derive three lessons from these verses. The, f the basic three basic mental handles to help us remember this. The first one is to know God. The second one is to honor God. And the third one is to be one with God. And so allow us to delve deeper, largely just from verse 9 to verse 10. And allow me again to just um, start with verse 9. And this is what it says. Uh, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you and asking God to fill you with all the knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And so the first point I want us to derive from that is the, fa is the importance of us knowing God. And I want this to be, not to be the knowing God of just knowing this is God or knowing God by name, but actually a deeper knowing God. And I like what Paul says, because in his explanation in this scripture, he uses this and says, He's praying for these guys to be filled with the knowledge 
of his will, and this is God's will, through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And I love what Paul is deriving here because for us, for you and for myself to know God, it entails us to know the will of God. But this will of God is just not the will of God. It comes through us through what Paul says is spiritual wisdom and understanding. And I like this because spiritual wisdom and understanding is not based on how on smarts. It's not based on how intellectually um, abled you are, how you can flex your intellectual muscle or uh, or academic muscle. It is purely based on the Spirit of God. And so as we start the year, one of the things I want to to pray for us and bless us with and actually even encourage us to do is to continually know God and continually seek to have what Paul says as spiritual wisdom and understanding ultimately which enables us to have the knowledge of the will of God because the knowledge of the will of God is actually knowing how God expects us to more or less live our life or rather uh, being in tune with God when it comes to the knowledge of the things of God. I know many a times like you, like myself maybe you have also struggled with the question what is the will of God with regards to this, this and this but I like how Paul encourages these people because he encourages them to have what is called and prays for them to have what is called uh, the spiritual wisdom and uh, understanding. And I like a definition of, of this in Job 28, 28, when Job actually says uh, that that the, the fear of God and that that is wisdom and to shun evil, that is understanding. And I like how Paul starts by talk, praying this, praying uh, specifically this uh small part in verse 9 about them. And for me, it basically ties down and boils down to knowing a God. So my question to you is that as the year starts, are you willing to know God more and to have a better understanding of God past the name, past what he can do, to actually embracing and knowing his will, knowing what he plans and what he intends for your life as you continue living. The second thing is honoring God. And this is derived from verse 10, the first part of verse 10. And this is what he says. And he says, and we pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in everywhere. Allow me to repeat that. He says, and we pray this in order that you, these are the people in that church, but now it means you and myself, to live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way. And this goes to me to mean that, uh, this for me actually means that there is an, uh, an extent to which just not knowing God, but even going down to honor God. And this is explained in two phrases where he says that you may live a life worthy of God and that you may please him in every way. And how I like to describe this is actually saying, something I usually like asking myself is whether in my living uh, life for God, in my living life in this world, in whatever I do, in whatever God has called me, and similarly to you, it may be in school, it may be in a workspace, it may be actually in a relationship, maybe at home, are you honoring God? And will God smile back at you? If God saw you, will God actually smile back at you? There is this thing people usually say, um, and there are memes that have been, uh, you know, have come up with that regard is, when your mother will see you at a party or at a church doing something that was off, there's a way she will stare at you and you'll know this is a no-go zone or this what I what specific specific thing I'm doing, sorry, is not right and is not in tune with what my mother would want. And similarly, it applies to you and me when it comes to a relationship with God. Are we living a life, our life in a, in a, in a manner worthy of God? And also, are we pleasing him in every way? Are we living our lives with regard to the standard of the of God? Because what happens for you and me in this contemporary modern age, there are so many standards we can live our lives to. There are so many things we can want our lives to live up to that standard. The standard of the world, social media, um, our friends, what the world wants us to do. And it's a fast-moving world and it's a fast-paced thing. You know, things are happening very fast. But in all of this, are we desiring to honor God and to be one with God? And to be at the standard where God wants you to be. It may be different, we may be in different seasons, different spaces, but the question is, again, that simple question I want to ask, would God see where you are in life? Would God see the things you are do, living up to and actually smile back at you? And are you honoring God? And so that's the second point. And the third one, actually it is just similar from verse 10, it just comes from the same verse, verse 10, is the second part of the second half of that verse that says, um, and it's just a continuation from the previous part, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. So the first point we looked at was to know God, to honor God. And the third point with regard to that script, uh, last part of verse 10 is to be one 
with God. So it's not only important for us to know God, for us to have uh, to, to, to have the spiritual wisdom and understanding that enables us to know the will of God and also move to a point where we can live a life uh, worthy of, of the Lord and also pre- please him in every way, sorry. But also it comes down to us bearing fruit, to us knowing what, uh, to, for us, to what the scripture says, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. And for me, this comes, it's like, it's like, it's, it's, it's why it is actually seen because when you talk about bearing fruit, it is the evidence of growth in your life. And as we start this year, 2023, my prayer for you is that we'll be able to bear fruit and fruit is something that is visible because in the same scripture, we have a, we, we in the same Bible rather, we have a verse that says, you shall know them by their fruits. I've forgotten what it is, uh, the specific quotation, but it talks about you shall know them by their fruits. And therefore, for you and me, in our desire to know God, in our desire to honor God, I do pray that we shall also bear good fruit fruit in good season. And that doesn't end there. It also goes on to tell us that we shall also grow in the knowledge of God. So this bearing fruit just doesn't come to an end in and of itself, but also it goes back and also gives us a knowledge of God. And I like this because it's like it's a full circle. Um, it all comes full circle because remember we started at knowing God, honoring God, and being one with God. So what happens here is that when you continually bear fruit with God, you continually also grow in your knowledge of God because God, unlike how the world understands things, there is no end to the knowledge of God. There is no end to knowing God. And I believe for me personally, this is a personal conviction, I am fully convinced that the more we grow, the more we come into different seasons, the more our our lives uh, are exposed to different uh, places, different seasons, different people, the more we know God in those seasons and the more you uniquely understand the, the role God plays in our different seasons in life. And so as we start this year, my prayer for you based on that scripture is three things, that we will continually know God, that we will continually honor God and that we will continually be one with God. And these things are like a, are like a circle again. Uh, they'll come back, back, back. And for me, another encouragement also with regards to that is that never tire to grow in these things. There is no limit to growing to know God. There is no limit to, to knowing God. There is no limit to know to honoring God, sorry. And there is no limit to becoming one with God. And I pray that come the end of this year, we will look back and we will truly, truly admit and we will truly, truly um, have uh, smiles and be joyous to the fact that God has enabled us to grow and to be one with these things. So be encouraged as you start the year. God bless you. Have a good day.